Hello everyone and welcome back! In this new lesson we are going to write our first Cypress end-to-end -end integration test. Let's then first start by creating the skeleton for our test. We are going to create here a new file inside the integration folder. Inside Cypress slash integration we are going to create a file named home.test.js. So this file is going to contain our integration tests for the home page that we see here on the screen. Notice that we are no longer testing one component in isolation, we are instead testing a full page of our application. So let's now describe here a new test suite, we are going to use just like in the case of Jasmine the describe method and we are going to give here a name to our test suite. Let's name it the home page. Now let's add here a test suite code block and inside it we are going to write our first test specification. So as you can see so far this is very similar to Jasmine. To define a Cypress specification we also use the it utility, let's give the specification a name, let's say that it should display a list of courses. And let's add here a test body. So what does a Cypress test look like? First, let's run our first passing test. We are simply going to add here the assertion expect true to equal true. So we would expect this test to pass. Let's hit command S to save this file and let's switch here to the Cypress UI and we're going to see that this time around we have here a new file in our integration test suite. So let's go ahead and run this specification. If we hit here the run all specs button, we are going to be redirected here to a new window where we have here on the left hand side a list of all the specifications that we are running and we have here the result of our test assertion expected true to equal true. So as you can see our first hello world test is now passing. Let's now see what would happen if we would update here our test by changing here our assertion where we say an impossible condition such as we expect true to equal false. So if we now hit command S and we run this new test, we are going to see that this time around our test is marked as failed here in the user interface as expected. As you can see here on the right, we can use the Cypress API in order to visit a given page of our application and write assertions to validate the page results. So let's do that, that will be our first actual end-to-end -end test. An end-to-end -end test in order to run needs a running version of the application, so we need to make sure that we are indeed running our front-end here on localhost 4200. Let's switch over here to the terminal and let's run npm start. So this is going to start our front-end server only. Notice that for the execution of our end-to-end -end tests, we won't be needing an actual instance of our backend. So it's important at this point in the course that you only start your front-end server, but not your backend. This means that if I would refresh here the application, I would get here an empty screen without any courses. And this is because I'm not currently using here a second terminal where I'm running a server using the command npm run server. Server. We are only running the client containing the front-end Angular part. So now that we have an application running on localhost 4200, we need to tell Cypress that we have an application running at this location. So in order to do that, you need to make sure that here in your cypress.json file, we have here this property base URL correctly pointing to localhost 4200. So if you are running the Angular CLI in a different port, if you are building end-to-end -end tests in an integration environment that is not running in localhost, it's very important that you set here the base URL correctly. Now from here in our end-to-end -end test, we are going to visit here the root page of our application. We can do that using the Sci global variable. So let's call here sci.visit and let's visit the root URL of our application, which corresponds to this page that you see here on the screen. Now, once we get to the page, once the page is loaded, we are going to confirm that we are indeed in the right page. So we should, for example, in this page, see that we have here a label saying all courses. 
Let's confirm that that is the case. In order to confirm that, we are going to use another Cypress API, which is the contains method. So we are going to assert that our page contains the string all courses. So as you can see, the Cypress API is very easy to use. We simply type the global variable Cy, and from there we have access to the complete API of Cypress. With this, we have written our first Cypress end-to-end -end test. So if we now hit command S, our test should be executed in the UI. Now it's very important at this part of the course to make sure that you are running the correct terminals. Before checking the results of the tests, let's just confirm that you are currently running the correct applications in multiple terminals. So you should have one running terminal that you have started with npm start that contains the front end of your application. The back end should be stopped at this moment. We won't be using the back end in order to run end to end tests. Also, you should have a second terminal running with the Cypress UI. You can run the Cypress UI using npm run Cypress colon open. So with this, you should have your test environment up and running. Let's switch to the Cypress UI and check the test results. And as we can see, our new test is now passing and we can see here on the screen that we have a version of our application that is currently not displaying here any courses. This is normal because our backend is down. We can see that we are asserting that our page indeed contains the all courses text and notice that whenever we click here on all courses, the part of the DOM that matches our contain selector has been highlighted. So this is very useful for debugging. We also have here the URL that is getting visited. We have here the list of Ajax requests that are being made by our page. So as you can see, there is an HTTP get to the slash API slash courses URL that is not returning any results. And we also have here a new HTTP request that you can safely ignore. This is the request for the hot reloading mechanism that the Angular CLI is using. Notice also that if you open the console, on this running browser, we are going to get here a lot of useful information about the application. So if we click here, for example, in this HTTP GET request, we are going to get printed out here to the console a lot of information about the request itself. We have all the information about the request headers, the request URL, and we also have here the HTTP response. If we now close the console and we inspect here this part of our Cypress UI, for example, by clicking here the last step, we can see that we have here a DOM snapshot of what our application looked like at this particular time in the test. So we can see here that this DOM snapshot is pinned. Using the dev tools, we can see that we have here a full DOM to inspect. We can see here that we have here an age free HTML tag corresponding to all courses. We have here the home component, the material toolbar, etc. We can also dock the dev tools to the bottom so that we can see better what is going on. So as you can see, the Cypress UI gives us a lot of very useful debugging utilities that we can use if our tests go wrong. But right now, the main problem with our test is that we don't have any data here. Let's then see how can we add some data by mocking the result of this HTTP response without needing to run our own backend server for that. 